Last night, I was able to put out a quick film study of JPP um, based on some film that I got of the Rams playoff win down in Tampa Bay in the divisional round from 2021. Of course, the Rams went on to win the Super Bowl. JPP only had two and a half sacks in 2021. I think I mentioned it in the video. It should be quite obvious. He really struggled with the injuries. He missed the last three games of the regular season in 2021. I, I believe missed two others. I'm not certain. Uh, I, again, I, I had the Washington game from midseason 2021, and he, he looked really compromised and limited by injury. Um, not explosive at all in that game. Even in the Rams playoff game, when I thought he did look more healthy, he was laboring and didn't have as much impact. And again, it was an incomplete film study. It was only two or three possessions. So, uh, And that was all the film I had of him, basically. All the complete games I had of him. So what I did today was I was able to get in Game Pass based on some recommendations from other people in the comments section uh, and, and take a look at some of JPP's film from some other games from 2021 and um, game film from 2020 when he was voted to the Pro Bowl. You know, he in 2020 at age 31, JPP had nine and a half sacks, 55 tackles, two interceptions, uh, four passes defended, and, and or six passes defended, and four forced fumbles. So a great season for being 31 years old. Now, you know what will he have left at age 33 in the 2022 season? That's that's one question to ask, right? Was his drop in production in 2021? A result of the injuries, or did he just get old fast? And I kind of find it hard to believe that he got old fast. I'm going to let some of these plays run now, um, as I you know continue having some commentary, and then I will break down some of the film. I, I find it hard to believe that he just got old fast, to be honest with you, because if you look at 2020, you know the Bucks won the Super Bowl, and in the NFC title game against Green Bay, JPP had five tackles, two quarterback hits, and two sacks. So overall, two sacks plus two other quarterback hits. He's playing well as the Bucs won the Super Bowl that year, right? I'm interested in, in what type of medical stuff the Ravens did because after watching film of him today in, from 2020, um, some of which I'm going to show you here. I know this is a strip sack from 2021 in Week 7 against the Bears. And this is another sack, this one against the left tackle for the Bears. I believe it's possible that JPP could be a, a 6 to 10 sack guy if he was able to play a full season and be completely healthy. Now, you know, do you get that guy? I guess it's the same question that you've got with other guys that the Ravens have signed. Kyle Fuller, you know, maybe, you know, there was talk of Julio Jones earlier. Um, a completely healthy JPP, I think, is a much better player than was represented on film last night in the first film study that I did, to be honest with you. Um, I think I think he might be the right player at the right price at the right time. Again, just something that the Ravens consistently do, particularly with the questions surrounding Ty Bowser. Who, if you don't know what I think of Tyus Bowser, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this in a moment. You know, I think way higher of Tyus Bowser than a lot of other people do. He was the Ravens' best defensive player in 2021 from week one to week 17. It's not even close. Now, what I mean by that is he's the guy who had the most consistent play, guy who had the most versatile play, ability to um, impact the game as a pass rusher, seven sacks, two others called back for penalty, by the way. Ability to impact the game by stopping the run, being a good edge rusher, or excuse me, being a good edge guy against the run. Great on run away from him. Great motor. And Ty Bowser can take great pass drops and play man to man. This is a split zone play where it ends up being a half sack um, between uh, JPP. And, and you can see the tight end is cutting him. A lot more athletic than what it, it looked like last on the film from last night. You can see he's definitely playing with a, a Big club here on the right hand, but dealing with an injury. Somebody in one of the comment sections said he had another injury as well. So serious things going on that the guy was able to play through. I like his game. I think that he would be a. It's a possibility he would be the right guy at the right time. You know, I guess if Bowser can't go, let's in the beginning in week one. Obviously, obviously Ojabo's not going right. Then you got Dalen Hayes, Owe, Ferguson, and somebody else. There's Houston. You know, Justin Houston, who I thought had a good season. I'm going to have a video out on him tomorrow, I'm just focusing on one game. Uh, JPP, I think, could fit right in there with those guys and, and play a lot. Anyway, let's get to some of the film. And so you can look at the plays in general in detail, and then you can comment on them and tell me what you think. This is going to be a pinch, a B-gap sack. So the D-tackle is going to occupy this guard. That's intentional. He's The D-tackle sometimes on, is not trying to go into the A-gap. He's just trying to occupy the guard. 
And then what happens is JPP slides into the B gap and exchanges with the inside linebacker. And it makes it really difficult for a tackle to keep up with someone as athletic as JPP. You can see the difference in explosion and playing through contact in some of these plays from 2020. Vastly different from the film that I presented last night. Same game, week six, 2020. Against the Packers, he really gave them problems. This is not going to be a B-gap stunt. This is just an inside move that is pretty impressive. You get the end zone angle, too. Swats with his right inside arm, right arm. Swats the tackle this way. Clears him out of there. Goes through the B-gap. Gets a sack. End zone angle looks pretty good, too. Here he is off on the right side, dealing with number 77. I think he also got him again as a left tackle in the um, NFC title game that year, but I could be wrong. I like the ability to play through contact more in 2020, and that is one of the things that I mentioned last night. You know, sometimes when a person is injured and or older, you can you can be explosive on the first step, the first contact, the first punch, the first rip, but it's that second redirect. This is interesting. He shows some versatility against Carolina here. He's that inside linebacker, and 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 the actual inside linebacker number fifty four is that edge or outside linebacker in a three four structure. And they blitz him late. It's a big completion by Bridgewater down the left sideline. I like Bridgewater. I feel like he's an underrated quarterback. No, he hasn't won a lot of games in the NFL. He takes a shot here and delivers this football. Look at the impact. Ready for this? Watch Bridgewater's body. That was a huge hit. Maybe JPP's a, a step slow on this. Not, not slow, a step late to go, to decide to go. There's not a huge gap here for him to fit into. And he finds it, and he goes and gets a quarterback hit. Again, showing his versatility. This is a zone drop, a cool blitz. What they end up doing from their, from their um, nickel look is bringing the nickel off the edge, number 35. And then the rest of these hats here, these three here, okay, they all slide toward the same direction as the nickel is coming from or as the nickel is blitzing, okay? So what, so it's just a domino effect. And what that allows them to do is get a four-man rush, and then JPP is going to drop back into this area here, and he's just savvy. He's just aware. I would say he's underrated for, um, for being a guy who can drop out in zone Two interceptions in 2020, I think. <clears throat> Four overall in his career. So there you go. There's a nickel who's going to blitz off the edge off the right. JPP's going to drop back. Watch what he does to the tackle, though. This is very similar to what Miami did to the um, Ravens offensive line. He's going to step forward just enough to make this tackle have to occupy. Okay? So that way the tackle's out of the actual protection scheme because JPP knows he's dropping back. Once he reads pass, he's dropping back. If it was a run read, if he read a run block, then he's going to go ahead and attack the edge and, and execute whatever his responsibility is. So it's a read and then dropping out. You can see the awareness looking at the quarterback. Sees you know where the quarterback is looking, trying to settle in that window. Great catch, securing the football. Versatile, a lot more versatile than I thought. Interception on the screen against the Rams. I actually showed a play um, from the Rams game last night where I was insinuating that I thought JPP was looking for the screen coming through the B-gap, and lo and behold, here is that exact play that I, just, that I think I was trying to describe last night from 2020, and I did not know that he had made this interception. It's obviously, um, Shaq Barrett is bearing down on Goff, so, so Goff's trying to get rid of the football a little bit earlier than he wants to. The running back's not even looking. JPP is, and makes the interception, almost takes it to the house. End zone angle that shows you nice job hands inside look eyes up looking for where the football could go breaks off of the offensive lineman once he th sees the quarterback pull the pin on the grenade awesome play only got four more plays but you can tell probably just by the tone of my voice and if you don't listen to me that's cool just the video is letting you know that he's you know looked a whole lot better in 2020 man if you could get this version of him look at this hustle here he lined up as the DN on the far side of the field. He's here, engaged with a tight end. Breaks off because he sees something. He sees Aaron Rodgers wanting to get rid of the football quick. Runs all the way across the field and helps make a tackle. 33 years old. 
know, at this point, some, if you sign him for 2020, is there a question mark? Yeah, sure. Two of them, right? Is he old? Is he hurt? Is he going to be hurt and old? But, uh, man, I don't know. There's something about old Lions to me, and uh, he looks like one to me. Right side, a sack versus that same guy, number 77, who's playing left tackle now. You'll see it's like a jump swat with the um, outside hand. Yannick Ngakwe used to use this move a lot. Got to be a pretty good athlete to use this move against NFL left tackles. Swat and then pull with the inside arm. Get under, tackles, left arm, almost force a fumble. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Looks a whole lot more explosive in 2020 than he did last year. Chalk it up to injury. Chalk it up to old age. Somebody's going to sign him based off of this film. Same guy, NFC title game 2020. One more play after this one. And he just pushed this guy on the train track. Some will call, some will call this a bull rush. It certainly looks like a bull rush. Uh, but but there's, a, there's an element to this whereby you're not going through the middle of his chest. You're, go, you're taking on half of his body. And strong, strong. Did not look this strong on film last night. I wanted to keep this under 12 minutes, so uh, we got to get, get this moving here because last night's video was way too long on JPP. Uh, some, some people don't do this the same way that I've been taught, and I've seen it taught, but a lot of times guys on these bull rushes will um, aim for you know, that point there, the inside, um, the inside of the outside foot of the left tackle. And then try to go right through the middle of his chest. JPP doesn't necessarily do that. He brings it back to the inside a little bit. We just call this train. He takes him on in the center there. And then he goes through the half of his body. Wonderful move. Can't do that if you're weak, old, injured. Looked healthy in 2020. Man, I'd love to see this guy show up in Baltimore, wouldn't you? If there's any Bucks fans watching, man, you guys are really blessed to have him and Shaq Barrett on the same team. This is, um, compare this to a run play I showed last night, if you watched that video, or if you watched that that far into the film. There was a run play where he takes on a tight end, similarly to what he just did here, knocks the shit out of him, knocks him back, and then isn't able to redirect as the ball goes inside. Compare that to this play here. It's that, it's, okay, there's a punch, and now let me shed and get involved in the play. Last night, it was punch, drive the guy back, and, and I was not able to get, you know, that second athletic as hell movement um, out of my body for whatever reason. And it, I forget who the game was against. Here he is right here. And that tight end is asking the inside tight end what they're doing. And he, and he helps him out a little bit, but not much. He just helps him out with the left arm. So he's not really helping that guy at all. That guy's getting his ass kicked by JPP. Awesome play. The nickel defensive back number 26 is in there as well. Fun to watch film of, um, of him today. Spent about maybe an hour and a half. Fun to watch film of older guys making plays. Would love to see him in the purple and black making plays like this. Man, would you take nine and a half? I mean, let yourself dream for a second, okay? It is, it is only June. You would take nine and a half sacks right now, and you would celebrate. I mean, that would be amazing. Eight and a half you would take. Seven and a half you would take. You know, as you start getting lower than seven, then you start saying to yourself, okay, well, my man Owe needs reps. We don't wanna we don't wanna have Owe lose reps and snaps like he did last year to Houston. And I and, and I was one of those preseason last year. I was glad that we signed Houston and I, and I think he did play well. In retrospect, however, I would have liked to have seen as many snaps as possible go to Owe. I don't want to see Owe lose a single snap to anyone this year. Um, unless a man comes in and gives us 12 sacks, right? Let me know what you guys thought of the film study. I was a little more relaxed. Uh, maybe um, this was probably the fourth hour that I've been working on film study tonight. There'll be another video coming out uh, later this evening, uh, one play pass concept video. And then I'm nearing completion of a TJ Watt video showing, displaying how TJ Watt has absolutely wrecked and destroyed the Ravens' offense for three seasons. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the comment section. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content.